Okay, this is a meeting of the uh, Enterprise Architecture Group. We have the antitrust statement. Participants at this meeting shall not discuss or exchange information related to the following. Any company's confidential or proprietary information, any prices of products or services of a company, purchasing plans for particular goods or services, and any company's specific merger or divestment plans, development plans, inventories, and costs, unless the information is publicly available. Over to you, Raj. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Dennis. So, um, like I said, Johan couldn't make the call today because he's uh, in, in KL and the timing just uh, couldn't work. Uh, so, we have two topics for today. Uh, one is around the seismic domain, particularly the seismic DDMS and uh, the different formats that we support and, and so on. I know this has been a, sort of a friction point uh, before. Uh, where you know some of the members were asking the EA team for recommendation on how best to achieve interoperability and and how we should use the um, the formats in in OSDU. So with that, I triggered a discussion uh, between the Schlumberger and the Blue Wearer teams. And so um, David C. Brook, uh, who is our uh, vice president for products, is uh, here, and he's going to um, talk about some of the um, uh, updates in that space. Um, I was trying to get either Andy or Marius from Blue Air, but I don't see them on the call. Um, but uh, nevertheless, that's that's the collaboration update. And then the second update that we want to give you is a, um, a subcommittee work group uh, that we had on common code assurance and how that leads up to you know platform validation and and, and certification. So Mick has been uh, working with us and and leading that work stream. So he's going to give us an update. So if that is uh, clear, then uh, David, I will hand it over to you. Uh, perhaps you may want to introduce yourself a little bit more and then get started. Yeah, sure, right. If you don't mind, I just want to make sure that I can make these slides go backwards and forwards. Can you just tell me that you see them progressing just so I know it's working? Yes, it does. Thank you. So uh, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Thanks for this opportunity to speak with you all today. My name is David Seabrook, as Rush said. I'm the head of products for subsurface interpretation and modeling within Schlumberger globally. And um, what I will talk about today is um, uh, how we wish to try and address this uh, double standard of seismic formatting within the OSDU in the post act domain. And uh, what uh, uh, we, bring with, we bring to you today, a proposal on, uh, on uh, how we think we can best address this. So with that, I'm going to jump straight into the um, into the quick review. So the way things are today, we see, as we've tried to depict in the slide over here, we have sort of two storage and exchange formats today for post tech seismic within the OSDU, one being OpenVDS from Blueware and the other being OpenZGY from Schlumberger. We realize and acknowledge that these uh, two standards create confusion, they create conflict. Um, and what we really need to do is settle on a single default uh, format within the OSDU. So we've been talking with Blueware, we've been talking with our customers, we've been talking internally to see how best can Schlumberger be proactive in helping to resolve um, this uh, particular situation. And so uh, what I want to propose today is, is the following on the next slide. I'll give you the high level summary and then take you through a bit of detail. So. You know, really, in the spirit of trying to work together and trying to do the best thing for all the members of the community, uh, what Schlumberger wants to do is uh, reposition uh, um, uh, OpenZGY within the OSDU space. And, and in order to do that, the first thing we want to do is really to acknowledge the OpenVDS standard as the default OSDU exchange format. This now, with this sort of simple positioning, allows us to take away a double standard or double format and allows us to say that when it comes to storage and exchange, we have no issues um, you know, acknowledging and using the OpenVDS standard um, for that. So what does that mean for OpenZGY? Well, OpenZGY, we're just simply going to reposition it. It's still a format that is available you know, to everybody in the OSDU. It's still an open source format. It's, however, not governed by the OSDU like the, um, the OpenVDS uh, format uh, would, would be. We, we, we make uh, OpenZGY available through the Open Group. Now, OpenZGY is a critical requirement for Petrel, 
and for uh, many of our scalable post stack work workflows, both from ourselves and from many, many partners and vendors who build on um, Z ZGY. So nothing really changes there. The only thing we're doing is we're introducing an interoperability between our applications and OpenVDS. So what that means is that uh, as you engage with OpenZGY in any of the Chamage applications, we would have by default and built into our platform the ability to exchange that into the OpenVDS format, right? So this would be uh, seamless and would um, allow um, uh, data to uh, reside in the long term in the OpenVDS uh, uh, format. So if we had to, uh, you know, maybe show that visually, we would like to propose the single default storage and exchange format, and then introduce the concept of a consumption format. And this consumption format is a format that allows, um, you know, the uh, the application uh, uh, to work in its most efficient manner, right? By using, uh, in our case, that consumption format would be Open uh, ZGY. And so. What you would have in our case is an open ZGY converter, which would be two way, it would be seamless, would be embedded with our applications. And this would allow open ZGY work to then, uh, uh, you know, um, convert to uh, open VDS for exchange or for storage and vice versa. And so we now create, uh, we remove the double standard. We agree and align on a single standard, but we also show the positioning and the value of a consumption format and where um, OpenZGY would continue to, to play within this, um, in this framework. So, you know, maybe the best way to explain this is just to go to some frequently asked questions around what we are proposing. So the first thing is, you know, the question could be, is OpenVDS the default OSG exchange format for seismic data? And our answer would be yes, the OpenVDS is the default exchange format governed by the OSDU uh, com community. OpenZGY, is OpenZGY an open source format? The answer would be yes. OpenZGY is a completely open source consumption format available to all through the open group, right? If you wanted to integrate closely with Petrel 3D post stack seismic workflows, you may ask which format or API should I use? And you would use the OpenZGY, the consumption format, because you're interacting and working with that data, you know, in real time. Um, how can users access the open, the OSDU open VDS through Petrel? Well, Petrel users can access this seamlessly through the integrated converters that Schlumberger are building inside its environment. And we're also, um, you know, collaborating with um, Blueway here to make sure that the effectiveness of these converters that we're building inside of our products, um, you know, do deliver the performance that is needed. Um, is OpenZGY supported through OSDU Seismic DMS? The answer is yes, through the consumption format concept that I presented. Do is Shamaj supporting and developing OpenZGY? Absolutely. And that's including its um, compression format, which is also going to be you know, a, a, a available as open source through the open group. So, you know, we want to make this position, we want to propose this position to the community to help uh, remove this, um, this double standard um, and hopefully simplify and streamline this so that we can all uh, progress onwards. So I only had uh, 10 minutes to brief you on that. So that's what I've done rather quickly, but maybe uh, best is now to uh, maybe take some questions or feedback from members of the community. Thank you. Yeah, I see uh, Mick has typed a question in the chat window, but maybe Mick, you may want to vocalize that. Yeah, sorry, I can't see the chat window for some reason, Raj. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, thank you. It, it just says, is, is is the converter that you speak of, is, is it embedded within or bundled with uh, applications on the application side, or is it embedded within the data platform? Yeah, so it's not. Um, so firstly, um, the we are not trying to, let's say, conflict or do anything in the business space of Blueway. So we don't sell it. We will not be providing or selling a standalone converter of any kind. Right, that is not our business, but we would have this converter embedded in the in the Delphi environment that would work on top of OSDU. Right, so uh, you, you know if you have OSDU, you can get converters for this into, between OpenZGY and OpenVDS directly. These sort of converters are the business of Blueware, but if you uh, then on top of your OSDU put a Delphi environment, that Delphi environment will come pre configured and contain within it the necessary converters and you wouldn't need any other third-party converters or any or any 
independent converters from BlueWare. If that makes sense, Nick. So if you take seismic DDMS as an example, um, uh, seismic, uh, the, 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 the seismic DMS uh, enables uh, access of trace data through open VDS. Uh, so it sounds like the, the approach is that apps actually don't speak uh, seismic DMS. They talk to a converter uh, that accesses the trace data. It should go through the seismic DMS, right? This, uh, this, uh, this workflow would work through the seismic DMS. So what we don't want to do, we want to have this managed by the seismic DMS. Yeah, Maybe. so I guess this, 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 this picture is actually what prompted the, the question, because on the one hand, you're saying the ZGY converter lives on top of the data platform in the Delphi environment, but as depicted here, the ZGY, the ZGY converter is actually uh, a part of the data platform embedded uh, within the implementation of the seismic DMS. Yeah, so maybe I need, I, I don't want to talk about the implementation. Maybe I, you know, I, I, I might have misspoken on the implementation side, but it will only be, we will provide it and it would be only active, let's say, it would only be usable when the application is present, if that makes sense. Yeah, so let me maybe chime in uh, here as well, uh, David, right? So, um, you know, today the, um, there is, there's two different formats, right? And, and the intent was to, um, and this was triggered by a sort of a system of record discussion, but it's really a multi-vendor interoperability discussions uh, that we were having with um, uh, Halliburton, Emerson, Schlumberger, and Baker. Um, and this is the resolution to that, right? So to your question, uh, Mick, um, the way it would work is the um, seismic DMS would say, you know, I can support additional consumption formats. And you could imagine uh, other vendors who also currently have, you know, different seismic formats that their applications use. They could decide to, yeah, perfect. Thank you for that, uh, David, right? So they could, they could also build those converters but this follows the extensibility paradigm of the seismic DMS, right? So in other words, the seismic DMS itself is not codified uh, against one particular format or the need for a converter. At runtime, you can plug in additional consumption formats. The challenge that we had today is out of the box as just part of the vanilla platform in the community edition, we had two different default formats. So when we started talking about how do we get multiple vendor applications to work, we said, what is that exchange format? And, and some were going with ZGY and others were going with uh, VDS. So the intent was to resolve that. The intent is not to say that every consumption format and therefore the converters have to be in the open source space. You should be able to plug it in into seismic DMS at runtime based on what the operator needs are and what application suite or suites you are going to end up using. Thanks, it's very clear. Yeah, right. Yeah. David, this is Andy James. Uh, I'm Andy, on right, call right, from, right. from Blue Air. Um, I, 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 re I really see this as, a, as an important decision, um, not just from a, a, a personal perspective, but really from a Blue Air perspective. So I'd like to thank David and his team um, for the open collaboration. Uh, this was a challenging decision to get to, I know that. Um, and so it's been a real pleasure working with you and the team. And the way I look at it is the, o the OSDU has provided a forum that enables really bold discussions about standards that both serve and simplify how companies become more efficient with subsurface workflows. And having Slumberger work through this decision and acknowledge OpenBDS as the default format for seismic data on OSDU, I think it's a real win for operators and innovators that are working within that platform. This really unclogs um, some, some difficult decisions in the past. So we're really excited about that. Um, it takes away the doubt about moving seismic data to the cloud. And it really clears the path for migration of existing seismic workflows um, and applications on the OSDU. Whether they're built to consume OpenBDS directly, as you kind of talk about there, Mick, or whether they use 
the open source APIs and leverage the exchange formats, which provide a bridge to those existing workflows and applications. I think the decision really brings some clarity to the organization. But more importantly, I think this is a win for the spirit of collaboration, community and standards. And so we're really excited to work with Slumberger and make this solution performant um, and enable these migration of these applications that are so important to these workflows and your companies. So um, thank you very much, David, for the, the time we've worked together. I think this is a great thing for the community. No, thank you, Andy, for those words. Thanks, Andy and David. Vishal here. Uh, just to add, I, I think the just to acknowledge that this is a uh, very well taken uh, in the spirit of community. Uh, very welcome uh, decision. I just want to acknowledge that the, I think the uh, it's not just the standard format, but uh, what this depicts is there is a uh, pattern uh, for be able to do the converters as well. Right, uh, so that's a, another mm -hmm. pattern from the OST open community perspective. Uh, it's a welcome decision that we are allowing the converters so that um, uh, applications, other vendor specific uh, applications, continue to work as well. Great, good point, Vishal. Yeah, yeah good point, Vishal. And then this should also help, uh, like I said, streamline the other discussions that you and I are involved in, which is how to put the vendor applications together to show interoperability, right? Hey Raj, this is Anup, guys. Uh, quick question. You did mention, David, that the uh, other, uh, I think Raj, you mentioned uh, you know, the Halliburton's and the Bakers got together and spoke, right? Is there any commitment for other converters right now or anything of that sort? I don't the, think this was a. Yeah, Raj, yeah, go ahead. Ahead. no, please, please go ahead, go ahead uh, David. No, I was just saying I don't have any uh, insight into what is being discussed uh, amongst uh, amongst those other uh, com other companies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so quick update on that, uh, Anup. Right. So, um, uh, the last time we discussed it, this is where we sort of um, fell flat. Right. Uh, we said, hey, look, uh, there is multiple formats, and of course, it doesn't mean that those are the native formats of the applications from. Emerson or Halliburton or 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 Baker. So uh, how do we how do we then come up with an architecture and a single default format uh, by which we can then re-energize that interoperability discussion? So what I would uh, expect now is with this alignment, um, you know, me, Vishal, um, Alice from Emerson, and and uh, you know, the right people from Baker, we'll we'll have to get back together, and then rehydrate the seismic interoperability workflow discussion, and say, guys, now that we've aligned on this, how do we get back to the interoperability workflow? So stay tuned for that. Um, I don't have an an answer today, but I would suspect that. You know, assuming that you guys are okay uh, with the proposal that you see on the screen here from an EA perspective, that we would then use the same template to allow the other vendors to also create converters and and and, and formats to integrate through OSD. Well, uh, so Raj, this is uh, Brian Dawson. I, I put it something in the chat there, but one of the things I'm concerned about is managing this um, as an operator. So uh, the you know for managing multiple consumption format converters, we need to make sure that we have a set of APIs that are, are set up for managing those configurations. I don't want to have to go into the bowels of the uh, configurations for the platform to be making these changes. Yeah, very very, very good uh, point, uh, Brian. Right. So th those things have to uh, be. Uh, showing up in the data stack as caches, right? Because you, you want to uh, manage from a durability standpoint, the default format, and, and that's the storage and, and the exchange format. And the more we can make those um, conversions transparent, uh, the less it is from a data management overhead perspective. Uh, very well understood. I think what we should probably do is, you know, if the pattern is okay, we should probably have a, a drill down on the seismic DMS. There's probably some 
um, additional calls that we may have to do on the API uh, to um, one, you know, register these converters and two, to explore if we need uh, anything exposed from a data management perspective so you can start to see, you know, how many consumption formats do I have for a given registered data set, for example? Yeah. Okay. Maybe, Raj, maybe I can comment on the back of that for Brian's question, just to say that the intention here is to make this a movement between exchange format and consumption format uh, seamless and uh, and embedded. Right now, that's a decision from Schlumberger's side to make that within its own particular product offering. But the aim is to do is to not create overhead for the end user here. Yeah, I understand what you're saying from from your your stack, but uh, if we're allowing you know every vendor to essentially create their own consumption format uh, converter here potentially, uh, then you know, managing that from an operator perspective could become onerous if we're not careful. And maybe it's wise to think of some guidelines or frameworks on what what constitutes a consumption format then, right? Okay. Around that. Yeah, build, build, Brian, build, building building on that from a, a shell and a, maybe EA point of view, that this 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 shows clearly where the platform is being construed for for ultimate interoperability and performance, but it also shows that there are a number of architectural options of where you might do some format conversion, including this high performance concerned uh, on the fly conversion. If if we're stabilized and uh, and, and can can see see the value of uh, putting putting that translation inside inside under the in, inside the service implementation of the DDMS, and ideally so. If if otherwise it has potential of happening in an application in a broad way or in a narrow way, but what we should also we should keep in mind, and this is I think what you're thinking about, uh, Brian. That not not every translation is going to work well. It depends on the the ultimate compatibility, and uh, kind of conceptual alignment and mechanical alignment of one format with another. So all of this is subject to uh, dem dem demonstrating that it is a sensible thing to do, and that it will work well for for the community. I, I think there's I'm, another. I'm with you on, on those comments there, Alan. Uh, where I was specifically coming from, though, was that my concern, uh, you know, my, my teams have to support the, I know. the o OSDU implementation inside of Exxon Mobile. So I'm, I'm, no, uh, that's, that's what I'm, I'm agreeing that we it shouldn't be, we shouldn't walk away from this and say, okay, every vendor knows now what they have to do. They have to build one of yeah. those things. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, so I, I'm, I'm more concerned about like, yeah, you know, if a you know application is needing to utilize the platform, and now I now I have to go into the you know part of the configurations for the platform to to register their their config their configuration for a converter, then you know that that's becomes uh, a and and a, 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 a future a future that's going to have an ever growing number of converters right. is not yeah. a good future. Exactly, a future that's a good future is a future that tops out. With a relatively small number of converters, and over time compresses into fewer, as more people get onto the same uh, recommended standard. Yeah, good. I agree, good I agree with that, there, Alan. Right? I mean, uh, there is the um, need to bring in the current gen applications and make yeah. them work on OSDU, but we need to be very careful that we don't define the new. World and and some yeah. of the cloud native no, workflows that, and ML workflows based on having to do conversions all over the place, right? Yeah, without getting into the Slumberj business, you obviously looked at ZGY and you looked at VDS and you found this can be done. This, this is it's not going to be a drag on on your performance to do what you're what you're suggesting, what you're agreeing. That right. would have to be the trick. That's not necessarily the case in every other instance that we might consider. Yeah, I, th I think from the perspective, uh, going back to what Ra Raj said earlier, having having the base format in in a in a system that can be used through APIs that supports interpretation workflows and various advanced workflows, it is a big step forward. The the translators, you, you put it really well, uh, Alan. 
the translator should allow for an interim transition, which essentially accelerate the adoption of ap applications consuming right. data on OSDU. And I right. think that's a real goal, but it's not necessarily the long-term goal. This is a bridging yeah. architecture um, that allows uh, applications to evolve into a more direct data access. And I think that should, that's really where the vision of this is. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Okay, so quick uh, time check, guys. If there is any last question, we can take it. Uh, if not, let's move to the second topic of the day, which is really around common code assurance. Hey, okay. I, I just I just dropped a quick question in the chat. Um, but if we don't have time to go into it, I know we have I know we have another topic. Um, but it was really no, no, just go, about go, if go we... for it, Andre. You would be the last question for that session. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, so, yeah, so basically it sounds like what we're doing is, you know, enabling you to ingest any format, you know, whether it be, you know, open ZGY or something else, and it normalizes to open VDS for storage. So my question is what happens to the original data? Are we intending to save that as well? So, for example, if it's SegY, do we save the SegY as well as the open VDS, or is the expectation that we just do that conversion? Or is it solely up to the converter to make that decision? In, yeah, in, this, in the this, end, this these, these decisions are in the hand of the operator, and and I think guidance, guidance, sensible guidance will come over time as we gain confidence in in the, in the newer formats. Yeah, the the tech stack today does not take a position on that, uh, Andre. Right. So, okay. for example, you can indeed take your SegY and and publish that into the seismic DMS as well. But whether you want to keep the segway and the VDS or just one, like Alan said, you know that's um that's an operator decision. The platform does not preclude either of those possible outcomes. Uh, again, over over time, uh, Andre, with confidence on the formats that are losslessly and efficiently exchangeable, we should be should be able to store fewer alternate formats. That's a goal. Yeah. 